Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. My name is Spencer, and I am here to describe to you all of the English words, all the words in the English language, almost all of them, over a very long period of time. Uh, I am recording this on January 12th, uh, 7.04 a.m. Would have been my grandma's birthday. How many years old would she be? Um, 94, I think. Anyway, um, I am recording this on a day that we are getting a big storm. I left the house this morning and the snow had just really started to come down. And just in my five minute drive, the snow went from like snow to storm. And I looked out the window just before recording and yeah, it's a, it's a storm. There's a storm a coming. Uh, And so when I leave work later today, my snow is going to be completely covered in snow. And then I hope to just stay inside for the next day and a half. But that's probably not going to happen. Okay, let's talk about the words today. Oh, so many more words I don't know. So many. We we start starting with the fun one. Fun one to say. I don't know what it is, but it's fun to say. We have epithelialization. Epithelialization. E-P-I-T-H-E-L-I-A-L-I-Z-A-T-I-O-N. Epithelialization. Well, uh, in the, at the end of the previous episode, we had epithelial, which is relating to the epithelium. So epithelialization. Um, oh, wait, there's another form of the word. Epithelization. Did we take out a whole syllable? epithelization epithelization is just a slightly shorter version of that noun from circa 1934 the process of becoming covered with or converted to epithelium converted to the epithelium changed into epithelium or i'm covered in epithelium uh, epithelialize, epithelialize, that, uh, that's a transitive verb, or it's just epithelize, epithelize, epithelize. Yeah, um, well, no etymology, because it's related to the epithelium, which is coming up, and the sound effect today is gonna be... Next, we have epithelioid, epithelioid. Adjective from 1878, resembling epithelium, as in epithelioid cells. So those cells are kind of like epithelium. They resemble it. They look like it. They taste like it. They dance like it. Resembling it. Here we go with epithelioma. That oma suffix is making me think this is like a tumor or a disease related thing epithelioma noun from 1872 the plural could be either epitheliomas or epitheliomata epitheliomata i think that's how you say it uh this is yes oh a tumor derived from epithelial tissue and that of course would be tissue that is of or relating to the epithelium so epithelium tissue uh, that has turned turns into a tumor. Uh, epitheliomatous with an O-U-S. That is an adjective. And now we have finally gotten to the word that all of these words are related to all the way here at the end of this little section. Here we go with epithelium. Epithelium. E-P-I-T-H-E-L-I-U-M. Noun from uh, 1748. We have, it looks like, two two definitions. One very long and one not so long. Number one. A membranous cellular tissue that covers a free surface or lines. It covers a free surface or it lines a tube or cavity of the animal body and serves especially to enclose and protect the other parts of the body, also to produce secretions and excretions, and to function in assimilation. 
Now, I don't know about that last one. It was, if you're getting assimilated by the Borg, somehow the epithelium is going to play into that scenario. Not sure about that one. So it's uh, it's this. It's probably a very thin tissue. It's a cellular tissue, and it's membranous. So it's like a membrane that covers everything, covers a free surface, or it lines a tube or cavity of an animal body. So like what? Like your esophagus, your your stomach, your intestines, your organs. Is everything covered in this on the inside and the outside? Um, it serves especially to enclose and protect the other parts of the body. I mean, yes, this is all making sense. Uh, it produces secretions and excretions. So things are secreted from it, or what does it secrete? Um, and I, I mean, I don't know if this is the best idea, but I kind of want to look up a, a picture of the epithelium. Um, I, I sort of have this image of uh, if they're doing autopsies or something, is, is, is there this like just thin layer of stuff that is covered in. Um, now, these are mostly drawings of like cross sections of epithelium. Um, like this one, there's, there's different types. There's simple squamous, there's simple cuboidal, simple columnar, transitional, pseudo stratified col columnar, stratified cuboidal, stratified squamous, but like where is it in the in the body uh some of these some of these are like um very thin cross sections they all have like a purpley pink thing to it because i think they've been dyed so they can look at under the microscope so yeah there's gallbladder epithelium hmm yeah this is uh this is pretty interesting lots of different types um but just like where is it Anyway, it's in bits a big it's a big topic. It's it's covered in all sorts of uh, all sorts of antibody, an, animal bodies are covered in it in some parts and you could get tumors if the cuz it's cells if the cells grow weird, it, you tumors could come come from it. Um some cells are like it, they resemble it, so that's epithelioid. Um epithelialization, the process of being covered if you are covered with this stuff, you are going through epithelization, uh, or if you are being converted, what is what what converts into epithelium? Can cells be changed into it? That would also be epithelialization. Okay, uh, number two is a usually thin layer of parenchyma that lines a cavity or tube of a plant. So plants also have an epithelium. And the etymology is from, oh, well, th if I hadn't seen these pictures, this would be extra confusing to me. But now that I've seen the pictures, I will, I can explain this a bit better. Uh, it's still weird, um, <laughs> weird to my brain. This is from the epi prefix plus the Greek word thele, which means nipple. And there's more at the word feminine. Now, the reason it looks like the reason that it is uh, comes af comes from the word nipple is because when you look at these cross sections, it's a bunch of sort of light colored areas, and then there's a dark spot in the middle. Uh, so like, uh, let's see, the, the simple cuboidal uh, type of epithelium is a bunch of like cube shaped. I don't know if each one is a cell. I'm gonna say each one is a cell that are sort of sort of cube shaped. But then there's this dot in the middle, and I don't know what that dot is. Um, whatever, I can't dig into this. Uh, let's see, that's the cell. Oh, it's the nucleus of the cell. Yes, I see a good chart here that the whole thing is the cell, and then the dark spot is the nucleus of the cell. That's where all the, all the good stuff is. I don't know. And so, yeah, you see all these dots and dots, and they say, well, it looks like a nipple. So we're going to name it after nipples. That's what they did. Okay, that's epithelium. I think we're all done with that thing. And now we're going to move on to... We have now epithet, or epithet. This is a noun from 1579, 1A. Characteri no, a characterizing word or phrase accompanying or occurring in place of the name of a person or thing. 
Um, I feel like I know what this is. Like you just call somebody. You it's it's what it's another name. What's an example? Um, where where are examples of these? This this text is too small. Um, ah, okay. So like Odysseus, one of his epithets was Raider of Cities. Um, transferred epithet. What is going on with this? What's this one? Um, Rosy fingered Dawn, Fleet Footed Achilles. Okay, so there, it's a, the nicknames. That's what it is. It's a nickname because it's a word or a phrase that occurs in place of a person or a thing. There's this cartoon character. Why are, why are there all these cartoon characters? Um, uh, L. Her epithet is gossip. <laughs> okay. I don't know where these cartoon characters are coming from, but they have epithets. What is that? Now we have a cartoon. Harry's a self-made failure. Epithet. An adjective or phrase denoting aptly some quality of the person or thing described. So he's a self-made failure, so that's his epithet. Uh, we we got to stop going down this rabbit hole because we got to go to 1B, a disparaging or abusive word or phrase. I think self-made failure is a bit of a disparaging or abusive word or phrase. So it's not so much a nickname, it could be, but it's just like if you're calling somebody something, that's an epithet, could be. Uh, 1C, the part of of a taxonomic name identifying a subordinate unit within a genus. And I would need to find an example to, to give you more information on that one. I don't know. The part of a taxonic name. So like the taxonic name, there's like the, I mean, there's the species name. That There's usually two words. What's the chicken is gallus gallus. Um, so is one of those the epithet? The part of a taxonic name identifying a subordinate unit within a genus. Could be one of those. Um, now we have number two. This one is obsolete, and the synonym is expression. So it's just, just a phrase. An expression is used to be called an epithet. But then it became just this thing that we use to describe people. Uh, this word is from, oh, let's see, the Greek epitithenai which means to put on or add, like you're putting on this name or phrase in place of your own, you're, or you're adding it to your own. Uh, that is from the epi prefix plus the word tithenai, which means to put, and there's more at the word do. So the uh, so it's to put, and then epi makes it put on, and it's like, yeah, I'm just going to try on this, uh, I'm just going to try on this phrase, see how it works for me. Um I guess a, one epithet for me could be dispenser of information. Is that how this works? Is that an epithet? Um, is there anything else to say about epithet? Yes, we can say that epithetic or epithetical, uh, those are adjectives. Why don't you come up with a good epithet for yourself and also me? And then you can tell me about them in uh, some way to get in contact with me. Bop, 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 bop. Next, we have epitome, E-P-I-T-O-M-E, -E. epitome. This is a noun from 1520, 1A, a summary of a written work. What's the epitome of that written work? What's the main point that we're trying to get across? Just a quick little summary of it. 1B, a brief presentation or statement of something. So you're just talking about something, but it's got to be short. I think that's the important part here. It's got to be brief and short and summarizical. Uh, you're presenting something, a statement of something. That's the epitome. What else? Number two, a typical or ideal example. Uh, the synonym is embodiment, as in the British monarchy itself is the epitome of tradition. And that is a quote from Richard Joseph. Good old Dick Joe said, the British monarchy itself is the epitome of tradition. It's the embodiment of tradition because they're so traditional. They've been doing traditional things for so many decades and hundreds of years 
they they just they love their tradition in the British monarchy. Uh, and so, yes, they are the typical or ideal example. I am not the epitome of a podcaster, probably. I don't know. Am I the epitome of anything? The typical or ideal example? I don't think so. Number three, brief or miniature form. Huh. Uh, this is usually used with the word in. So is it in epitome or epitome in? The epitome in something. I don't know. Brief or miniature form. The, the small form of a thing is the epitome. Uh, so yes, you're taking the whole big idea and you are shrinking it down into what's the most important part, what's the typical example, what's the 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 substance, the nucleus of it. The epitome of the epithelium is the nucleus. I, I, sure, why not? Uh, let's see. Anything else? Uh, epitomic, epitomic or epitomical, those are adjectives. And this is from the Greek word epitemnin, which means to cut short. Cut it short. That is from epi plus temnin, which means to cut. And then there's more at the word tome. Tome? I think tome. Not probably tomey. It's probably tome. Uh, there, I think that's like a short story is a tome. Um, and so that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think. Any other good epitomies? The epitome, I, I like this word. It's a fun word. Uh, the epitome, the good example of, hmm, yeah, I can't think of anything because I'm not trying hard enough. Next is epitomize with an S, which is the British variation of epitomize with a Z, which is our next word. Epitomize. Transitive verb from 1594. One, to make or give an epitome of. So if you are, I guess if you would be doing one of these uh, 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 brief, where is it, the brief presentation or statement, or if you are creating a miniature form, if you're creating a summary of this literary work, you would be, you would be epitomizing it. Two, to serve as the typical or ideal example of. So if you yourself, or if the thing is the epitome. So the British monarchy would be epitomizing the... So uh, King Charles, a phrase that he is so happy that we are saying now. King Charles would be epitomizing the British monarchy because he is being an example. He is following the traditions overall, mostly. Um, yeah, epitomize, epitomizing. Next is epitope. Epitope, E-P-I-T-O-P-E. -E. This is a noun from 1960. A molecular region on the surface of an antigen capable of eliciting an immune response and of combining with the specific antibody or anti antibody produced by such a response. Let's read it again, but fast. A molecular region on the surface of an antigen capable of eliciting an immune response and of combining with the specific antibody produced by such a response, called also determinant antigenic, oh, determinant, that's one thing that it's also called, or also antigenic determinant. So it probably, it determines something. I don't know what I read. Do we need to read it again? It's a region of the service of an antigen. What's an antigen? Capable of eliciting an immune response. So when something is going on in the body that needs to, you, your body needs to fight it off, then the, this, this, this epitope, I think, is related to that. Combines with the specific antibody. The antibodies are the things that are going to go fight them off. Maybe the antigens are like that too. They're like... They're antibody. They're anti-thing. They're like, no, we don't like you. I'm going to get rid of you. Uh, antibody produced by such a response. Uh, so yes, when the immune response happens, these antibodies, antibodies go out to do the fighting, and it's going to work with them, combines with them also to help with that immune response to fight off the stuff. I've never heard of the epitope. Um, this is from the epi prefix plus the Greek word topos, 
which means place. So they're they're on top of the place. They go to the place to do the stuff. Next is epizoic. E-P-I-Z-O-I-C. And oh, that Z. That Z is making me feel like we're getting ready to get into a new section. We're almost done with the epi words. Um, in fact, yes, the last word in this episode is the first of the non-epi words. Okay, epizoic. Epizoic. Adjective from circa 1857. Living upon the body of an animal, as in an epizoic plant. Uh, what uh, what did I just watch? Uh, there was some clip uh, from a new thing coming out. I don't know. There was this massive like water buffalo creature thing that was coming out of the water, and it had all of these plants and stuff on its back. Um, sometimes you'll see large uh, uh, sea turtles have a bunch of plants on their back, on their shell. Um, I'm sure there's other things. Uh, but yes, any sort of... Maybe not large, but I think often large creature, or maybe something that just doesn't move very much, uh, could start having plants grow on it. Um, epizootic. Now I want to see some pictures of uh, something that's epi epizoic. Is that the word? Is that the word that I just said? Uh, yep. Here we go. We got some like algae growing on uh, turtles. Seems like turtles are a common one. We got an insect that looks like it's got some algae or lichen on it. Uh, probably some fishes, some fishes. Uh, yeah, so that's that's pretty interesting. Epizoic, because zoic, that word, that part of the word means animal, and epi is all about on top of that animal. And so what else is on top of an animal but a plant? Great. Epizoite, that's a noun. So I guess that would be, that would you, you could call that plant an epizoite because it is epizoic. Epizootic. Epizootic or epizootic? Something like that. Uh, e P I Z O O T I C. Noun from 1748. An outbreak of disease affecting many animals of one kind at the same time. Also, the disease itself is called an epizootic. Now, where did we see? I feel like, was it in the last episode or the one before that? There was something else about an outbreak. Um, yeah, I'm not going to be able to find it, but it was a similar thing about affecting everything all at once. Thought it was recent, but maybe it wasn't as recent as I thought. Okay, uh, epizootic, that word, also is an adjective. So it's, it's, a, uh, it's a noun and it's an adjective. This is from the French Epizootique. Epizootique. That's, I don't know how to say that word. Um, also from the word epizooty. I also don't know how to say that. That means such an outbreak. Oh, such an outbreak it was. That is from the epi prefix, like the epi from epidemic. That's definitely related. Plus the Greek word Zooites, I think that's maybe how they would, zooites, uh, that means animal nature. So anything of an animal nature, that's why we have that zoo prefix or zoo part of the word. Um, and then also from Zoe, Z-O-E, which means life. So if your name is Zoe, it looks like, I mean, I don't know what other languages would have Zoe in there, but uh, probably just means life. Life is Zoe. Uh, and then there's more at the word quick. Just because, why not? Quick, that's definitely one of those words that comes up a lot. Sorry, I got an itch on my eyeball. Um, that's one of those words that comes up a lot. Is like, there's more here at this word. Why, what's with those words? Why do they have, so, what, what, what did they evolve etymologically so much from these other words? I don't know. da our last epi word. Oh, we had such a good time in this epi section. Epizoa. Oh, I read this before. This is a hard one. Epizootiology. Epizootia. Epizootiology. 
epizootiology, E-P-I-Z-O-O-T-I-O-L-O-G-Y, epizootiology, hui Noun from 1910, one, the sum of the factors controlling the occurrence of a disease or pathogen of animals. All of the factors together, you put them together, and you've got the epizootiology, um, and all of these factors, what do they do? They control the occurrence of a disease or pathogen of animals. What would those be? Um, they control the occurrence of a disease or pathogen of animals. I don't know. I don't know. Like how they connect to each other, how the animals, like, is it, it's all about the spread of the disease or the creation of a disease. Um, yeah, lots of factors go into that. Um, I mean, it could be something as simple as like the wind conditions, maybe. Um, but yes, all of those factors together, I guess, are the epizootiology. Epizootiological uh, or epizootiologic, that's an adjective. And uh, I think it looks like it has pretty much the same etymology as the previous word. So now we're going to go on to our last word. E-P-O, all caps. Abbreviation for erythropoietine. Hmm, I'm not entirely sure how to say the last part of that word because it is spelled E-R-Y-T-H-R-O-P-O. P-O-E-I-T-I-N. Erythropoietin? Maybe. I don't know. We'll probably see that word in the E-R-Y section. Now it's time to pick a word of the episode. We had today epithelialization, epithelialization, epithelioid, epithelioma, epithelium, Epithet, epitome, epitomize, epitomize, epitope, epizoic, epizootic, epizootiology, and epo, or epo, or just epo. Uh, I think either epithet or epitome. One of those is what I like for the word of the episode. Um, the epitome... Ooh, yeah, I just I just like epitomies. What the epitome of anything? The epitome of oh, I wish I were better at like uh, improv and stuff. My I, I need to practice those brain muscles to just come up with stuff and say stuff. Uh, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. That part of this podcast is me trying to be better about that. Um, the, the epitome of an epizoic. Uh, plant is this turtle with plants on it. Oh boy, I don't know. A pit. Let's just sing a song about epitome. Epitome, epitome. It's a good example of a thing. Epitome. Hey, hey. All right, enough with that nonsense. Now let's talk about a movie that I watched. Um, let's see. Maybe, maybe a couple of movies. Did I finish? Yes, I think I finished 2023. So now let's talk about 2024 movies. It's only been a few. Um, no hard feelings. The first movie I watched this year, 2024, wasn't until January 6th. I had a busy, a busy first week. So January 6th was the first one. No hard feelings. Uh, Rom-com with uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Um, I don't know if she was maybe like a producer or something. But um, yeah, it's just a kind of a fun, quite silly rom-com and, you know, there's a couple of scenes that are probably the ones that people talk about most. I'm not going to talk about them here. But, but yeah, Jennifer Lawrence, she goes all out. She's, like, showing her physical comedy chops. And, you know, we already know that she's an amazing actor. But, you know, she, it looks like she, was, she wanted to do some more fun physical comedy, like a Goldie Hawn kind of thing. Uh, let's talk about another one, American Fiction. Holy crap. Good movie. Important, I think. Um just a lot there was a lot more to it than i was even expecting based on the trailer that i saw so yes i highly highly recommend american fiction that's the end of the episode thank you very much for checking out my podcast i sure do appreciate it check out the show notes for other stuff 
And until next time, this is Spencer being the epitome of someone dispensing information. Goodbye.